Okay, so I've been an e-bike boy for about four months now. And there's a few things I learned along the way. The first is people ask questions. What's up? And is the battery on yourself? Yeah, you can, okay. yeah, you can buy them as kits. And the most common question you get about e-bikes is how fast do they go? That's the first question everybody asks about your e-bike, even though it's like the least meaningful question. They should be asking, what's the range? How much money does it save you in gas? How much fun is it? Not, what's the max speed? Because when it comes to e-bikes, you never go the top speed. I mean, occasionally you do just for fun, but it's super inefficient to be going 50 miles an hour on an e-bike. It just burns through the battery. And that whole trade-off between power and range is what I want to talk about in this video. And more specifically, how to know what power e-bike to get. So what's going to fit your needs the best? So when it comes to my bike, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. It's my very first e-bike build, or just e-bike in general. It's a 2000 watt hub motor, 72 volt battery, and a 45 amp hour controller. Can I make this light? Yes, I can. Clutch. My bad, it's a 45 amp controller and the battery capacity is 20 amp hours. And altogether, I'm very happy with those specs. In terms of total range, uh, of course, it's going to depend on your weight, the terrain, how fast you're going, all that kind of stuff. But I could easily squeeze out 35 miles of range while going about 25 miles per hour. In fact, I can probably get more. I just don't like to drain the battery. I never let the battery get below like 30%. So if need be, if I used all of that battery capacity, I guess the range would be more like 40 miles, which is pretty good for an e-bike. And aside from my weight, because I am super skinny and this is a lightweight aluminum uh, bike frame, I think the major reason why I have such amazing range on this bike is because I paired a rather beefy 20 amp 72 volt battery with a 2000 watt motor. Usually people pair this battery with a 3000 watt motor, but I figured 2000 watts is more than powerful enough. And spoiler, I was right on that. I'm very happy with this power level. And the benefit of 2000 versus 3000 is that of course it uses less power. So it increases my overall range. I actually have a live readout right here of the watts that my motor is currently using. And we can see right now going 26 miles an hour, it's 600, 700 watts. And right now I'm going up a slight incline and it jumped to 1200 watts. So still well below the 2000 watt limit. And if I crank this up to the highest power mode and just rip it like I'm doing right now, first of all, it has phenomenal acceleration. I'm going 38, 39, I just touched 40 miles an hour and that's the power of a 2000 watt motor. And I'm just very happy with it considering its efficiency and power. But of course, all because this setup works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So I wanna give you guys some information on what you can expect from different power hub motors. And we're gonna begin this scale at a 1000 watt hub motor because personally, I wouldn't go below 1000 watts. As mentioned, I can see the readout of watts on my screen here and very often it's going over 1000 watts. So if I was limited at say 750 watts, I just don't feel like that's enough power. Of course, if you want a bike that's 750 watts, there's plenty to choose from because technically that's the legal limit here in the United States. But a 1000 watt hub motor Motor. The Aerial Rider X is an e bike that has a 1000 watt motor, and the top speed on that setup is about 35 miles per hour. Now, again, a ton of other factors are going to affect the top speed, so your weight, and I'll say that probably the biggest factor is the voltage of the battery. So, if you pair a 1000 watt motor with a 72 volt battery, the top speed might be a little bit more, like 36, 37 miles an hour. The other major factor is going to be the amperage of the controller. And I'm not gonna focus too much on that in this video because usually when you buy e-bike kits, the hub motor and the controller are sold together. So you don't really have any control over that. And it's usually a linear progression. Okay, so getting back on topic and the progression of hub motors, the 750 watt legal limit is gonna be that class three level, which is like 28 miles an hour. A 1000 watt motor, as we just talked about, is roughly 35 miles per hour. A 2000 watt hub motor, which I have here, maxes out at around 42 miles per hour. Per hour. 
The next one up is a 3000 watt hub motor. And I would say there's a hard line between a 2000 and a 3000 watt hub motor because 3000 and above, in my opinion, is more of an electric motorcycle. So the Onyx, for example, the hub motor on that nominally is 3000 watts and it peaks at around 5000 watts. But a normal 3000 watt hub motor can have a top speed of roughly 50 miles per hour. And then from there, the next one is a 5000 watt motor. I don't think there's a 4000 watt option. And that's around 60 miles per hour. And as mentioned, the voltage of the battery and a few other factors are going to affect this number. But I'm just trying to give you guys a baseline. So for most people, a 5000 watt hub motor is going to be the upper end of what you're looking for because it goes 60 miles per hour. But if you do want a custom super Super high power build. There's 8,000 watt motor, there's 12,000 watt motor, and that range of wattage is going to be around 80 miles per hour. So for most people, that's not even worth considering because it's just a waste of money and complete overkill. And to tie this back into what I was saying in the beginning half of this video, if you get a hub motor that's just way overly powerful, all it's going to do is limit your range and take way too much power from your battery. So I'm super happy with a 72 volt battery and a 2000 watt motor. If you want more of an electric motorcycle and to replicate the Onyx, a 3000 to 5000 watt motor motor is going to be what you want to look at. And on the low end, I really wouldn't go below a 1000 watt motor unless you really want to keep it fully legal and go 750. And I say that because when I look at my watt readout on my screen, I consistently go over a thousand watts at a time, even when going slow, because when you go up a hill, for example, the motor is going to draw a bit more power from the battery and you want to have a little bit of that overhead in order to maintain speed. But I'm at my destination, so that's going to have to be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed and you got something out of this, definitely give it a like, subscribe to the channel, because I make consistent e-bike related content. Are you were talking about getting an e-bike? think about it. Like, you want to take mine for a spin? So that was me trying to be nice. That's the guy that works at the front desk of the gym I go to. And he sees me on the e-bike every day. And I guess that motivated him to research e-bikes. And the other day he was asking me questions about it. So I was like, bro, why don't you just ride it? <laughs> and he had a big smile on his face, but he said today doesn't work. But there's one more thing I want to mention about this topic before I go. And that's when buying an e-bike kit, there's other things to consider besides just the wattage of the motor. So definitely keep that in mind. I don't want to just focus on wattage. It is the single most important spec, but something I completely overlooked when it comes to my e-bike kit was the features that the controller actually offer. So one that I'm really missing out on is a locking feature. So that way you can plug in some kind of a, a Bluetooth lock for your bike. That way not anybody can just turn it off and on. Another rather important feature is a 12 volt wire for like a headlight. Not every controller has these features. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for this and not just be obsessed with the wattage and power of the motor itself. But yeah, that's what I wanted to say on the topic. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.